Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today we have my full review and discussion of the Cold Steel SR1 Lite. Now, this knife is kind of an interesting knife because I have to say that in my review of the original version, I didn't really love it. And the big reason I didn't love it is because the cutting performance was only so, so. Um, the blade I found just, a, the grind I should say, I found just a little unfortunate. I wish this grind was higher. I wish it on this as well. However, okay, this will cut and uh, you know, let, let me say this. The, because of the blade grind, I feel like this becomes a much more occasional carry. That is, you need this knife for some very, very specific things where toughness and durability are much more important than cutting power. And I feel like with a knife, that's rarely the case, right? It's a knife. It's supposed to cut stuff. But, okay, this, op, this particular version changes the conversation a little bit because it's much more budget friendly. Now it's not cheap. Okay. I think these go for between 60 and $70. So it's not cheap. However, it's cheap enough that I feel like it's a more realistic option than the SR one, which I just wouldn't recommend where this it's, it's cheap enough that you could buy this and have it for those rare occasions when you need a cutting tool just like this. Okay, and then the rest of the time you're going to be carrying whatever else you, you normally carry. Okay, so maybe it's an American Lawman or a Code 4 or a Recon 1 or whatever the case may be, or, or a Para 2, okay? Uh, so, and some of those I'll, I'll bring in here when we get to the comparison portion of the video at the end. Uh, so, by the way, this is just to give you a little bit of background. Uh, this knife is based on a very popular fixed blade, okay? The, the Cold Steel SRK. Um, survival rescue knife has been so popular for so many years. Great knife, well loved by all kinds of people. It makes total sense why they would bring out a folding version of it. And I did review that folding version and it is sort of what it claims to be a giant, massive hulk of a tool with a blade that's so ridiculously thick and thickly ground that you couldn't break it if you tried. And this is still doing that. Okay. Um, just at a considerably cheaper price point. And I think that's in something that's really, really important to consider. Now, there are some sacrifices, and we'll talk about those in one second, okay? So, let's go ahead and get into size and weight on this, and then we'll start talking about the specific characteristics and whether or not those sacrifices are worth making, okay? So, size and weight on this, nine and seven sixteenths overall, so just a hair under nine and a half inches, three and 15 sixteenths on the blade, so almost four inches of blade, you may as well call it four inches, five and seven sixteenths on the handle, again, very close to five and a half inches, four and a quarter inches of grip area, which is quite a bit, plus this little choil up here if you wanna use that, and this weighs in at 6.7 ounces, which is a little bit lighter than the normal G10 version that's in. So the, the regular version, in case you're not familiar with it, is G10 and uh, S35VN. This one is Grivex and HCR13 MOV, and with the HCR13 MOV, that kind of brings us to the blade discussion anyway. So let's go ahead and talk about that a bit. Now, I will say this. If anyone but Cold Steel made this knife, it would probably be even a bigger failure than it is right now. However, I do want to show you, sorry guys, I just got to reach over here for a second. I do want to show you, this can cut, okay, but, but I'm having to put a fair bit of pressure behind this. And you can actually see, see how this is having to bend out of the way in order for me to make this cut. So this is just an unfortunately thick knife. I, I would love to keep the stock as it is and just grind it another you know, eighth of an inch thinner and grind it a little thinner behind the edge. Now, perhaps in Cold Steel's testing on the HCR13 MOV, they found they didn't get great performance when they ground it thinner or something like that. So you know, that's, that's completely open to discussion, okay? And maybe that's the case case. They are pretty good about uh, thinking that stuff through most of the time. Uh, let's go on though with the other characteristics. Okay, so we've got a satin grind. This is the Tanto version. There is a drop point. I will say the grind on this is so, so nice. And again, Cold Steel did put a razor sharp edge on it. A and so the performance is not terrible. By the way, the other point we could say make here is that ATR 13, despite not being my favorite steel, is going to be fairly readily sharpenable. Uh, even if you're not a great knife sharpener, that steel is pretty soft, so you shouldn't have too much of a hard time. Having said all that, and and you know, 
believe me guys i I'm, I'm the first one to admit that we don't need the super steels okay that most of us don't use our knives nearly enough to to require m390 or 20 cv or even s30v for that matter okay even vg10 <laughs> um, but there's two things here that, that come to mind. First, yeah, edge retention is not great on ATR 13 MOV, but the other thing is it's not really known for its toughness. It's not just the most crappy steel ever, not at all, but I feel like there are other equally cheap or very close to equally cheap steels that are known to be a little bit tougher and more durable. And since this is a knife that's really all about toughness and durability, one of those may have been a better option. Even the Aus 8 that Cold Steel used on practically all of their knives for many, many years may have been a better option. Now, again, I feel like I keep saying this because I, I don't want someone to to you know accuse me of being a knife snob or you know to make or, or to be putting you off of this knife for no other reason than the steel again i think hcr 13 is fine for this application it's just not my favorite choice okay so and by the way of course you know price point has to be considered in all of that now moving on to the lock triad lock um, teflon washers so I think I did have someone ask me in the uh, initial impressions video what kind of washers were in this. They are Teflon washers. They've done that thing that Cold Steel often does where they put two washers. And I've got to say, the action on this is quite good. You know, I can actually get this to drop shut. You can flick it open. Well, sorry, I can't do it on camera. There you go. You can flick it open quite quickly. And because of the thickness here, and, and I don't know, maybe Cold Steel's made some minor changes to their to the way they're putting things together. I've noticed most of my newer Cold Steel's are better in terms of how comfortable the lock is than they have been in years past. So uh, I've got to give them credit for that because they have done a really good job of creating a knife where the lock is comfortable, the thumb stud is great. Look at that great big thumb stud. It is so comfortable uh, that I, I feel like I have to mention it specifically. It's really, really nice uh, in terms of deployment there. It feels fantastic. All right. Um, so lockup and deployment, very good. I have no real complaints about it. Uh, in fact, for the price point on this, it's going to be better than a lot of the cold steels that even you may have even paid more money for. Uh, so big fan of that. Moving on to the handle. Got to talk about the handle a little bit. Uh, Grivex handle, uh, minimal amount of steel in here. Essentially what they've done is they put a steel liner just where they needed it to make the lock work. Okay. And I think that's a great option because it does lighten up the knife. Now it does mean that the knife feels a a little blade heavy but you know I don't find you know balance to me is not a big deal I'm not flipping my knives around or doing any kind of weird fancy ninjutsu with them I just cut stuff and for that I find as long as I can hold on the handle I'm good to go all right um, this is a comfortable ish handle and and it's big and it's hand filling and for those reasons it's pretty good however if you have some other knives let's say you've got a, a recon one if you've got an 8010 uh, if you've got a formax this is not going to be as comfortable as some of those knives that are really known to be gr fantastically comfortable but it's comfortable enough to use without any kind of issues okay now thinking of all those other knives let's go to uh, a few comparisons the one i want to get in here first is the Recon 1. And the reason is you can jump up to a Recon 1 for only a few dollars. And yeah, you're not going to get that crazy thick blade stock, but you're also going to get a knife that is much more versatile, that can do almost anything you would need to do with a knife rather than is very purpose driven. So if you're really looking hard at this, now if you already have a Recon 1 and you just love this design or you want something crazy thick and overbuilt and because of the price you're thinking, hey, it's, it's doable rather than the the, the full price version. I get that. I absolutely do. But if you're looking at both of these, I think I would highly recommend, not I think, I know, I would highly recommend you save a little extra money, go up to the Recon 1. Okay. Uh, let's grab a couple of other quick comparisons here. I wanted to put the Recon 1 in there first because of, you know, the fact they're fairly close in price point. Uh, let's throw in, here's the Zero Tolerance 0640. Here is the Para 2. And, and again, these are not comparable knives at all. But I, I think these are knives that some people are going to be a little bit familiar with. All right. Uh, of course... Uh, here's the Benchmade Crooked River. Again, similar size, you know, another knife that I like a whole lot, uh, a little more practical, but uh, certainly a little more expensive, maybe a lot more expensive. 
8010, which is one of my favorite cold steel knives ever made. And uh, let's throw in the Formax. There is, of course, the Formax Scout, which would be closer in price. But, uh, you know, this will give you an idea of how those compare. And honestly, guys, that might be another knife that I would look at in comparison to this. Uh, either the Recon 1 or the Formax Scout are going to give you something a little more versatile. And you're on the, on the, uh, the Formax, you're not sacrificing any toughness. In fact, you're getting a tougher, more heavily built knife. On the Recon 1, I, you're not sacrificing enough toughness to care about it, but you're going to get a knife that cuts a lot better. All right. So... In conclusion, do I like this knife? Yes, I do. Do I like it better than the original version? Absolutely, because I feel like this knife is a very occasional carry type of knife. You're limited by the thickness of the blade, and yes, it's meant to be tough, and it is tough, crazy tough. However, for 99.99% .99 of my knife usage, I don't need a blade this tough. I need a blade that cuts better. And so because of that, most of the time I'm going to want something other than this. However, because of the price point on this, which is I think around 60 bucks, and of course you will save a little bit on that if you go to White Mountain Knives and get it because you can use my discount code SHARPSTUFF. Um, because of the price point on this, I do see this as a viable option for someone who, you know, yeah, maybe every day you carry a pair of two or you may be a griptilian or whatever your favorite knife happens to be, a Manix two, doesn't matter, but you want something sometimes that you can really beat on that's incredibly overbuilt, that's above and beyond the call of duty, and this is reasonable to have as that secondary backup, rarely carried knife, because now it's, it's a little more affordable. So I absolutely think that there's a legitimate place for this, perhaps even a more legitimate place for this than the original SR1, which was not only, you know, had some of the same challenges in terms of edge geometry and cutting ability, but was also like 150 or even close to $200. Okay, so there you go, guys. That's my take on the SR1 Lite from Cold Steel. Very cool knife. Uh, definitely glad to see this as, you know, part of the Cold Steel lineup of what's available out there. Glad that it's more affordable and therefore more accessible to lots of people. Wish it was in a better steel and wish it, wish it had slightly better edge geometry. And I don't know, there's, to me, it's, it's good, but I feel like there are enough knives out there that that are better, that it's hard to recommend it highly. Do I recommend it? Do I think it's a good knife? Yes. Would I recommend it above all kinds of other things? That's where I have to say no. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.